Stay out of the house expands a lot more on the backstory of the night shift abductor, or also known as the butcher. Today, we'll go over all three possible endings which you can have in Stay Out of the House by Puppet Combo. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. This video will contain spoilers about the game. With that said, let's begin. I have already made a video going over the story of Stay Out of the House and its prologue, Night Shift which you can watch by hitting the card above. If you have already done so, you can skip ahead to the time indicated for the endings. Night Shift acts as a very short prologue introducing the Night Shift abductor. This perpetrator wears a thick burlap face covering and thick seasonal clothing, which fully protects his identity. He uses a hammer in his attacks to conduct a sadistic ritual later in his house, taking his victims' lives. He also uses an unmarked white van to place his victims in. In the prologue, the abductor intricately organizes a plan to abduct Debra, presumably his last known victim who worked night shift at a gas station. Interestingly, before being kidnapped, Debra had a short encounter with a mysterious man who comes to the store and asks if Debra is alone. This man will play an important role in one of the endings. Sometime later, a woman called Roxanne and his driver called Brendan drive by a seemingly abandoned house. Brendan pulls over to presumably find a toilet or possibly his car breaks down. The details are still ambiguous at this point. After Brendan leaves Roxanne in the car, a long time passes and Roxanne grows anxious and impatient. She leaves the car in effort to find Brendan. She enters the seemingly abandoned house, and before she realizes, she gets jumped by the abductor, who knocks her out with his hammer. As soon as Roxanne wakes up, she notices a strange feeling coming from her stomach, with a possible incision site even. The next thing Roxanne notices is the place she is trapped in, a cubicle space covered with netted wiring, assuming to herself that whoever attacked her placed her inside this place. But strangely, the netted wiring isn't secure at all and can easily be opened. Roxanne thinks to herself if this is intentional or accidental. She sets out to find answers as she proceeds she finds satanic symbols and upside down crosses all over the walls with cultist TV broadcasts. She even finds human skin lying on the floor, presumably used as leather rugs. Terrified to what this place is and who attacked her, Roxanne finds newspaper clippings and diaries presumably from her assailant, shedding more light on who this person is and what are his intentions. The newspaper clipping describes the assailant as a 6 feet 4 inches built male in his 30s, who has kidnapped 6 people already in a few weeks, with his last victim being Debra, presumably the protagonist from Night Shift. His diary suggests that the abductor heavily believes in an entity whom he feeds with the flesh of his victims. He believes that the more scared and terrified his victims are, the better and sweeter they taste to this cryptic entity. An entity that demands flesh and wants to feel. That is presumably why the netted wiring was weak enough for Roxanne to escape from, and why the abductor gives his victims three days before killing them. He wants them to get more scared and taste sweeter for the entity. Soon later, this theory is further fortified as Roxanne finds Brendan tied up to a chair. The abductor, or as now appropriate, the butcher, plays around with Brendan for a while before killing him with his chainsaw. He doesn't kill Brendan right away, he creates the right amount of fear before doing so. Exploring further, Roxanne finds a wheelchair-bound old woman 
who looks like a corpse. This old woman screams very loudly when Roxanne approaches her, which alerts Dab Doctor. There's also a hostile demonic baby who has a room of his own, with toys and a crib. At this point, Roxanne decides enough is enough and tries rigorously to find an exit. This brings us to the three endings, which can be unlocked based on the decisions and playthrough of the players. Possibly the most appropriate ending is the rebirth ending. However, this can be argued. Roxanne, after exploring the house, finds a covert basement passage with a long, narrow corridor leading to a bloody door. As she enters, she finds a grotesque, possibly cosmic or even demonic entity latched onto the ceiling with its tentacles. This entity has a large mouth with sharp long teeth, possibly for consuming the human flesh. Around it lay several egg-shaped sacs, which presumably are a part of its reproduction system. A theory is that this entity is some sort of demon, hence why there's a cross in the room and multiple satanic and antichrist symbolism on the walls in the house. There's also sermon TV broadcasts, which might suggest to be some sort of satanic cult. In one of the endings, we also learn that the abductor performs some sort of rituals as well, which correspond to this entity being a demon. The baby found in the attic might be an offspring of this entity as it requires a lot of hits for killing it and it seems to be of supernatural nature. The walls within the room where the entity occupies has streaming blood and it is truly a horrifying spectacle. The intentions of the butcher are not very clear to why he feeds this demon. He mentions in his note that the pain and suffering of his victims are nowhere compared to what is to come. The butcher might be in fact preventing an imminent apocalypse by sacrificing several humans to keep the demon satiated and at bay, at least for some time. Or in a more likely case, he is nurturing the demon and feeds it to get stronger and execute its ultimate plan. At the time this video was made, not a lot of information was provided to what this entity is and what are his intentions. Therefore, we can only theorize for now. The next ending is Sacrifice, where the protagonist gets tied up upside down in a cave-like room where satanic rituals are presumably being performed. There's a being in black that rocks back and forth possibly another victim, or even a family member who's performing the satanic rituals, with human bones lying around. This ending can be achieved if the protagonist gets caught three times by the abductor. This is possibly a method the abductor uses to prepare his victim's flesh for the entity. As he mentioned, making them sweeter. And finally, the last ending is possibly the most thought-provoking of all. If the protagonist manages to escape the house, she ends up in a cornfield, with the abductor chasing after her with a chainsaw. The protagonist carries on running until she stumbles upon a small residential site, with a few static homes and bungalows scattered around. Roxanne, in absolute panic, reaches the door of a house and shouts out for help. A man opens the door, who happens to be the cryptic customer from the night shift. The large belt man who carefully observed Deborah at the gas station, asked her if she's alone and walked out, with no car being seen anywhere close by. A mystery at how he got to the gas station store, as this place seems to be very far away from the gas station. A man who might be associated with the abductor. What is even stranger? is that the abductor suddenly vanishes as soon as Roxanne reaches this house, even though he was very closely on Roxanne's tail. Roxanne nervously begs the man to help her, as the abductor is going to kill her. The man, very calmly with no expression, asks if Roxanne wants to come in. Roxanne's vision goes blurry and mentions that she's feeling sick, 
The man yet again repeats himself with no expression. Do you want to come inside? Roxanne then starts choking and pukes out blood, while a mysterious creature flies out of her mouth, while the man observes her expressionlessly. This explains why Roxanne was pointing out towards her stomach in the beginning. The abductor possibly force-fed her while she was unconscious, or he might have had placed some sort of parasite or insect inside her stomach after making an incision. This creature might have been used for the purposes of the ritual and also as means to make sure she will die at the end, no matter if she escapes or not. The man in this new house, however, is very mysterious. He was the man who went to the gas station and asked the peculiar question if Deborah is alone. Many people have thought that this man might have been the night shift abductor. But as the night shift abductor was on Roxanne's tail, it's unlikely for him to have appeared right in the house in front of her. The night shift abductor also makes menacing unintelligible sounds, suggesting that he is unable to speak at least in a sensible manner. But this man on the other hand, although concise and short in words, can make perfect sense. But he is still very suspicious and might be even an accomplice to the abductor. After all, he repeatedly asks Roxanne to come in. Maybe so, he can quickly finish her or subdue her. A most likely theory is that this man, alongside the abductor and the people who live in his house, and maybe even the other people in the small residential area, might be all involved in the abductions. After all, the entity seems to be of demonic background, especially with the upside down crosses and satanic symbolism. It's a possibility that more people are planning the abductions and when the moment is right, they send in the butcher to finish the job. Maybe these people are part of a call to worship this entity and try to nurture it until it becomes strong enough to perform some sort of action. The sacks and the bloodied room suggest that this entity has been continuously growing and getting stronger. And even the night shift abductor suggests that he's been doing it for a very long time. First the homeless, but now night shift workers. The only question is what are the ultimate goals of this entity? What does it want to do? Is it something vague such as taking over the world and bringing the apocalypse? Or something more twisted and philosophical? Let me know what are your thoughts in the comment section below. This brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, stay tuned for more horror related videos by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. You can also check out the latest horror themed clothing by checking out my store or hitting the icon in the channel's art banner. Also let me know what other games you'd like explained. It's been your host star, till the next video, have a fantastic day.